Weekly Ink Holiday Santa Storytime featuring the 100% real Santa Claus who is real and will never ever die. It's me, Santa Claus. You may remember me from last year or your entire childhood. <laughs> what was that over there? That's weird. Because I'm definitely in this cabin in front of the fireplace uh, where I've been locked away for all of 2020. It's been a heck of a year. All of the elves are working from home. And, uh, you know, we've been, uh, we've been socially distancing here at the North Pole. And it's, it's been, it, you know what, it's, it's been great. It's, 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 <laughs> it's weird. I don't know what's happening over there. It's been, it's been okay. Uh, but as you know, uh, you know the drill. Every year we get together on this Christmas Eve, Eve, Eve. Eve, 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 I think, and we uh, we just have a we have a nice time reading some stories. But first, oh, 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 before we read, before we read the stories, we have to make Santa's famous Christmas cocoa. Oh, oh, oh. now this is good stuff. This is my this is my secret recipe. I've never shared this with anyone. I've never shared it with even even Mrs. Claus. She doesn't she doesn't have a clue what I'm drinking when I pull out this mug. Well, I'm gonna show. Oh, oh, oh I lost my hat. Let's put that on. All right. So, Christmas cocoa. I already have my water in here. Now I set this up kind of early, so unfortunately, this water is extremely tepid, and and you know that's. That's my fault. <laughs> my fault. But you might you might you might like it with with tepid water. We'll see. Of course, you start your hot cocoa with a hot cocoa mix. I, I forgot a spoon. Santa's very prepared. But look, this mix is old enough that it's hardened into nuggets. So we'll just put a couple of those in there. One of these. All right. <laughs> and then we've got some of our Christmas favorite spices. Right here, we've got lovely chopped pecans. So you could just I'll put a few of those in there. <laughs> and then Christmas spices. We've got ground all spice. And it's called all spice because you use all of it. Put it all in there. <laughs> and then some ground cinnamon. We'll just put a little bit of ground cinnamon in there. <laughs> and it's starting to get a lovely, lovely brown color as hot cocoa should be. This, you can take it or leave it. I'm a big fan of Arizona Arnold Palmer's not sponsored. <laughs> we'll just put a little, little bit in there. We'll just set that off to the side. <laughs> This little fella, if you've been watching, if you've been watching this stream the past couple of years, you know this thing does not stay on. I should really get some elastic or something on there. So we'll put in a. These are, I don't know what these are. These are called. They were called snowballs. They were in the checkout line. I think they're like a cheese puff of some kind. <laughs> it floats. <laughs> it floats. That's neat. Uh, let's see. We're gonna have a. This is. This is the secret sauce, okay? You want to make a good hot cocoa? You're going to think I'm crazy, but this is the secret sauce. Again, not sponsored. This is McCormick Grillmates Hamburger Seasoning. I, did, <laughs> I don't make the rules. Hamburger seasoning. We got a little bit here. We're going to put that in. And then, you know, top it all off with a candy cane. I should have unwrapped that first. That was my mistake. And then one more. One more thing. This is this is a family friendly stream, so this is maple syrup. It looks pretty watery because it's American maple syrup, but uh, to you adults, Saint Nick knows. All right, let's put a little in there. All right, we're about ready to read some stories. 
Bon appétit. Oh, it's got a little kick to it. That's good stuff. All right, set that right over there. Now, you can sound off in the chat, but we got some books to read tonight. Let's see here. Oh, oh Santa. Oh. Santa's getting a little, uh, a little long in the tooth and long in the belt, if you know what I mean. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we got a few a few stories here. We got the Nutcracker. I'll put that there. That's a little bit of a longer one, but we can do it. Never feed a grumpy reindeer. I I like this one because you you just <laughs> that's pretty neat. Uh, the Crayons Christmas. Uh, this one's a good one for uh, for the Christmas season. Waiting is not easy. Put that right there. Uh, this one I'll put to the side. I don't know if we're going to do that one. Uh, we did this one last year, but it's a it's a classic. We can do it again. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. A, a disclaimer: Green is a popular color in Christmas stories. Uh, I'm not mentioning that for any specific reason. I don't want to peel back the curtain too much. But if you notice any little anomalies or or oddities inside the books, you're just going to have to ignore it. <laughs> uh, this one was requested. We can do this. This is a uh, fox in socks. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the yes pile. We'll do that. Uh, I don't remember if we did... Olaf's Night Before Christmas last year, but I'll put that over there. Christmas with Peppa! Ho, 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 ho. It's, a, it's a kind of absurd, all these little animals, and they can, they can all talk, and they play sports and run around and do stuff. That's that's crazy. Can you imagine? Ho, ho, ho. And of course, my old friend, he's uh, he's actually, he's, he's on into his middle ages now. He's got kids! Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. His kids' names are uh, Derek and Chad. I didn't necessarily agree with it, but they're not my kids, so... <laughs> ha! That back. All right, there you go. We're right up top. Ho, ho, ho! Can you all hear me okay? Can you all hear... I got the... I got... I got one of these... The elves, they built this for me. It's a computer. And I got the chat right here, and I can see... I can see what... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get this start. Who? What do we want to see first? First book I see in the chat. That's what we're reading. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and throw something in there. Anytime. Grinch. Okay. First book I see is the Grinch. We're gonna read that. Grinch. This is a this is a redemption story. Here's a guy who was on my naughty list for a lot of years. And then he decided to just turn it all around. And it's a nice story. You can do that too. Maybe you're, maybe you've got, you know, a heart that's a few sizes too small. You know what I mean? Maybe you don't know what I mean if you haven't read the book. We'll start right now. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, <laughs> TM and copyright by Seuss Enterprises. LP 1957, renewed 19... <laughs> That's just a little joke I like to do. Just start reading the ISBN information. <laughs> okay. Every who down in Whoville loves Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now don't ask me why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. Uh, I feel it's important to interject that, uh, yeah, as a kid, uh, I was confused by a lot of things in these Dr. Seuss. I, mean, I say as a kid, I predate Dr. Seuss by many years. But I was confused by a lot of things in these books, such as, the you know, the Lorax. The Lorax, at the end, he lifts himself up by the seat of his pants. Did you know you can't do that? And as a kid, I could not figure out why. So it's important to mention 
that heads... <laughs> oh, you little devil. It's important to mention that heads are not, are not screwed on. It's way more complicated than that. And you cannot remove your own head. It may seem like a good idea. You, get, you can't remove your own head by unscrewing it. So don't try. It doesn't work. Well, let's move on. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may be that his heart was two sizes too small. And he's the yeah, cardiologist. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a grinchy frown, with a sour grinchy frown, at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he crawled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew. Eh. All the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. And then the Who's, young and old, would sit down for a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something they liked least of all. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. And they'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. Blah! And then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. Yeah, that's a that's an okay job, but uh, it's nothing like the real genuine article, as you can see. And he chuckled and chuckled. What a what a great Grinchy trick! With this coat in his head, I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, If I can't make a reindeer, <laughs> if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Mask, Max, and then he took some red thread. And he tied a big horn to the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags, some old empty sacks, and a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then Grinch said, Get it! And the sleigh started down towards the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. Hmm. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without a care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claws hitch, hissed. And he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. <laughs> you know, I take offense that, that they, would, they would oversimplify what it takes to fit down a chimney. It's a lot of magic. It's a lot of special herbs and and, uh, and potions. It take this magic. People think the magic just happens just because I'm Santa Claus. No, it takes a lot of maintenance, and you can't just on your first day make it down a chimney. But they'd have you believe it's oh so easy. Okay, he got stuck only once for a moment or two. You're right. 
with where the little who stockings all hung in a row oh then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where the little who stockings all hung in a row these stockings he grinned are the first thing to go then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present pop guns and bicycles roller skates drums checkerboards tricycles popcorn and plums and he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that icebox quick as a flash. Why, the Grinch even took the last can of Who hash. And then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. Oh, these pages stick together. And when you get to be my age, saliva's hard to come by. Here we go. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard the small sound like a coo, like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who. Little Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny Who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. He stared at the Grinch. She stared at the Grinch and said, Auntie Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot? The fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. His fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. The last thing he took was a log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing at the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with the presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the, <laughs> to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open for a moment or two. Then all the Who's down in Whoville will all cry boo-hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. It started down at Whoville. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or another, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. He puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps. A little bit more. And what happened then? Well, the, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day, which can't be healthy. 
and the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. He brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. That was how the Grinch stole Christmas. More, really more a story of how the Grinch brought back Christmas when you think about it. Uh, you know, I mean, I had the pleasure of interviewing the Grinch uh, a couple couple months ago. And uh, Tommy, do we have that tape? We don't. We don't have a Tommy either. On who am I talking to? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's get on to another story. I'm gonna pick something a little, a little shorter this time around. Uh, something we can speed through. Let's see. All right. This is called Christmas with Peppa. Ho, 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 ho. I'm going to have to do my best. Uh, have you ever seen Peppa Pig? I'm going to have to do my best Peppa Pig voice. It's cri it is Christmas Eve. Peppa, George, and their friends are mailing letters to Santa. I can't wait to see what Santa brings us all, says Peppa. Everyone is very excited. That afternoon, Daddy Pig buys the biggest Christmas tree he can find. Daddy, it won't fit in the car, says Peppa. I'll just have to carry it home, grunts Daddy Pig. Daddy Pig carries the Christmas tree uphill and downhill all the way home. The tree is heavy, and it takes him a long time. Poor Daddy Pig, he's worn out. Daddy Pig finally makes it home. Let's decorate the tree, says Mummy Pig. They add colorful ornaments, and Daddy Pig puts a shiny star at the very top. Oh, everyone gasps. The tree looks beautiful. Peppa and George leave a snack by the fireplace for Santa. It's time for bed now, says Daddy Pig. Santa won't come unless you're asleep. Peppa and George are tucked up in bed when they hear a loud thump. It's Santa. He can't get down the chimney. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So he goes to the front door. Peppa and George race down the stairs, giggling. Hello, Peppa. Oh, hello, Peppa and George, cries Santa. Merry Christmas. Now off to bed so I can deliver your presents. Peppa and George don't want to leave Santa, but they do want presents. They go back upstairs to sleep. Hooray! It's Christmas morning! Snort! George gets a toy train, and Peppa gets a yo-yo. But Peppa and George's favorite present of all was meeting Santa. This is the best Christmas ever! Cheers, Peppa. The end. I mean, <laughs> this, is, I, this is not a, it's not a true story. I never actually met Peppa Pig. I would have gotten her autograph if I had. But, uh... I don't know. This Santa Claus, he basically said they got to meet Santa and he said, Hey, nice to meet you. Get out of here. Uh, I mean, I don't know that that was really a great meeting, but you know, it's nice to take pleasure in the small things. So, uh, we did have a request from before the stream that we read Fox and Socks, and I got the long version because I'm feeling a bit spicy. So here we go. We're going to speed through this. You've never seen Fox and Socks read so fast. I'm going to do this one time straight through. Fox, Socks, Box, Knocks. Knocks and Box, Fox and Socks. Knocks on Fox and Socks and Box. Socks on Knocks and Knocks and Box. Fox and Socks on Box on Knocks. Chicks with bricks come. Chicks with blocks come. Chicks with bricks and bro blocks and clocks come. Look, sir, look, sir, Mr. Knox, sir. Let's do tricks with bricks and blocks, sir. Let's do tricks with chicks and clocks, sir. First, I'll make a quick trick brick stack. Then I'll make a quick trick block stack. I think it's better if I'm this way or facing the microphone. You can make a quick trick chick stack. You can make a quick trick clock stack. 
And here's a new trick, mix, Mr. Knox. Socks on chicks and chicks on fox. Fox on clocks on bricks and blocks. Bricks and blocks on knots on box. Oh, <laughs> said us camera restarted there. That, that was silly. Now we come to ticks and talks, sir. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, sir. Clocks on fox tick, clocks on knocks talk. Six, six bricks tick, six, six chicks talks. Ah! Oh, oh. Please, sir, I don't like this trick, sir. My tongue isn't quick or slick, sir. I get all the ticks and clocks, sir, mixed up with the chicks and talks, sir. I can't do it, Mr. Fox, sir. I'm so sorry, Mr. Knox, sir. Here's an easy game to play. Here's an easy thing to say. New socks, two socks. Who socks, two socks? Who sews, who socks, who sews, two socks? Who sees who sew, who's new socks, sir? You see, Sue so Sue's new socks, sir. That's not easy, Mr. Fox, sir. Who comes, crow comes, slow Joe crow comes. Who sews crow's clothes, Sue sews crow's clothes. Slow Joe crow sews whose clothes, Sue's clothes. Sue sews socks of fox and socks now. Slow Joe crow sews knocks in box now. Sue sews rose on slow Joe crow's clothes. Fox sews hose on slow Joe crow's nose. Hose goes, rose grows. Nose hose goes some, rose, crow's rose grows some. Mr. Fox, I hate this game, sir. This game makes my tongue quite lame, sir. Mr. Knox, sir, what a shame, sir. We'll find something new to do now. Here is lots of new blue goo now. New goo, blue goo, gooey gooey, blue goo, new goo, gluey gluey. Gooey goo for chewy chewing, that's what that goo goose is doing. Do you choose to chew goo too, sir? If sir, you sir, choose to chew, sir, with the goo goose, chew sir, do sir. Mr. Fox, sir, I won't do it. I can't say it, I won't chew it. Very well, sir, step this way. We'll find another game to play. Bim comes, Ben comes, Bim brings Ben broom. Ben brings Bim broom. Ben bends Bim br Bim's broom. Bim bends Ben's broom. Bim's bends Ben's bends. Ben's bent broom breaks. Bim's bent broom breaks. Ben's band, Bim's band. Pig, her big bands, pig bands. Bim and Ben lead bands with brooms. Ben's band bangs and Bim's band booms. Pig band, boom band, big band, broom band. My poor mouth can't say that, no, sir. My poor mouth is much too slow, sir. Well, then, bring your mouth this way. I'll find it something it can say. Luke Luck likes lakes. Luke's duck likes lakes. Luke Luck licks lakes. Luke's duck licks lakes. Duck takes licks in lakes Luke Luck likes. Luke Luck takes licks in lakes duck likes. I can't blab such blibber blubber. My tongue isn't made of rubber. Mr. Knox, now come now, come now. You don't have to be so dumb now. That's kind of harsh. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, please. Through three cheese trees, three free fleas flew. While these fleas flew, Freezy Breeze blew. Freezy Breeze made these tree three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees cheese freeze. That's what made these three free fleas sneeze. Stop it, stop it, that's enough, sir. I can't say such silly stuff, sir. Very well then, Mr. Knox, sir. Let's have a little talk about Tweedle Beetles. Kind of gave up rhyming there for a moment. What do you know about Tweedle Beetles? Well, when Tweedle Beetles fight, it's called a Tweedle Beetle battle. And when they battle in a puddle, it's a Tweedle Beetle puddle battle. And when Tweedle Beetles battle with their paddles in a puddle, they call it a Tweedle Beetle puddle paddle battle. And when Beetles battle Beetles in a puddle paddle battle, and the Beetle battle puddle is a puddle in a bottle, they call this a Tweedle Beetle bottle puddle paddle battle muddle. And there we go. When beetles fight these battles in a bottle with their paddles and the bottles on a poodle and the poodle is eating noodles, they call this a muddle puddle tweedle poodle beetle noodle bottle paddle battle. And now wait just a minute, Mr. Fox, Sox Fox. When a fox is in the bottle where the tweedle beetles battle with their paddles in a puddle on a noodle eating poodle, this is what they call a tweedle beetle noodle poodle bottle paddled muddled duddled fuddled waddled fox in socks, sir. Fox and Socks, our game is done, sir. Thank you for a lot of fun, sir. We're done with that. Let's not do that again. Oh, my goodness. All right. All right, let's see. Uh...
That's a lot. I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that again. All right, hold on. Let me get a little. It's. I gotta say, being being Santa Claus and having this beer. Beard, <laughs> beard, not beer. This is a family friendly stream. No, <laughs> that's tea. Uh, but having this beard and trying to drink literally any liquid is uh, is not an easy task. Let's see. Uh, I get another uh, another another book a book request. We still have waiting is not easy. Oh, say, can you say if you want me to do more rhymes for some sadistic reason? Uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, no books till the cocoa is sipped. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. You really taste that hamburger seasoning. <laughs> it makes it delicious. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we got never feed a grumpy reindeer. Rudolph, Rudolph, did we ha have another request before Rudolph? Is it just Rudolph? Oh, oh, oh I love you too. Oh, let's see. Okay, Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, the classic story. Uh, with with annotations by Santa, some things didn't happen exactly as they are uh, written in the book. Let's see. How much time we got? We got like uh, 21, 20 some minutes. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Way up at the North Pole, there's a special place called Christmas Town. Families of reindeer live in cozy caves. Elves work at the factory making presents for children. In Santa's castle, Mrs. Claus makes sure he eats plenty so that his holiday suit fits just right. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. Claus, she tries, she tries, but I have to do most of the cooking. I'm, uh, I, I actually, I went to culinary school, if you can believe it. Uh, you know, it wasn't always my dream to be a, a Christmas mascot, but, you know, sometimes you just... You play the hand you're dealt, you know what I mean? Okay, everyone loves living in Christmas Town except for one year when the weather was so bad that Christmas was almost canceled. <laughs> one year, <laughs> that's, that's happened more than once, let me tell you that. And actually, this this, uh, this workshop here, this that's not where that is. It's actually that hill right over there is where, where it is, but I'm sure they just did it for for artistic reasons. One spring donner, the lead reindeer, who helped pull Santa's sleigh each Christmas, became a, la a, pr a loud papa too, but a proud papa. He and his wife named their son Rudolph. Soon after little Rudolph was born, his tiny red nose began to glow. Great! Bounce and icebergs! <laughs> I do say that. That's true. That's one of my favorite things. You've probably, you've heard it. I'm sure you've heard it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I definitely exclaimed Santo when he saw this. If Rudolph's nose continued to glow, Santa said, he would never make sleigh team when he grew up. Donner taught Rudolph all the things a young reindeer needed to know, especially to beware the abominable snow monster. All the while, he hid Rudolph's nose under a cover and hoped it would someday stop glowing. I was actually on board with the red nose from the beginning. I want that. I want to make that clear. That uh, it was a, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I hadn't. I'm not gonna lie. I hadn't seen. I hadn't really seen the full utility of the nose. But it, it's all he was gonna like. It was gonna it was make my job more difficult. It was, you know, it was fine. He had a red nose. I don't understand why. This story they always demonize me so much, but. Here we go. As the months went by, the elves were busy making Christmas toys. All the elves loved their work, except for one. Hermie just didn't have a knack for toy making. Maybe that's because he dreamed of becoming a dentist one day. This made him feel like a misfit among his fellow elves. Rudolph felt like a misfit too. He didn't like the nose cover he had to wear. Without it, his nose growed as brightly as ever. 
but Donner was determined to keep that secret. On the day of the annual reindeer games, Rudolph met Clarice, a pretty young doe. When Clarice said she liked him, Rudolph was so excited that he flew through the air with joy. Flying was exactly what Comet the coach was trying to teach the young reindeer. Everyone was amazed by Rudolph. Until his nose fell off. All right, I'm seeing in the chat, is this book real? Well, yes, you can see it. It's right here. I'm holding it. All the other reindeer except for Clarice laughed at Rudolph and called him names. Comet said, from now on, we won't let Rudolph join in any reindeer game. Rudolph went off by himself feeling sad. I, I actually fired Comet. When I found out about this, I was livid. And I, Comet, you know, they, whenever anybody tells the, tells that, that night before Christmas and they, they say that I say, I don't say Comet anymore. So anytime you read that story to your kids, leave Comet out. He's, he doesn't work for me. We are not affiliated with that reindeer. At the toy factory, Hermie was having trouble too. He skipped elf practice so he could fix doll's teeth, thinking he might fit in better that way. When the foreman found out, he yelled, Come to elf practice and learn to wiggle your ears and chuckle warmly and do important stuff like that, or you'll never fit in. But Hermie just couldn't. He ran away instead. Before long, Hermie and Rudolph met and shared their stories. They decided to go off in the world together. You don't mind my red nose! I, I'm not trying to do a mean voice. He really sounds like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not if you don't mind my being a dentist, replied Hermie. It's a deal, said Rudolph. On their first day, they heard the abominable snow monster's terrible roar. He must have seen your nose, cried Hermie. The two friends tried to stay far ahead of the monster. Soon, they met Yukon Cornelius and his dog sled team. Yukon was looking for gold! But he found Rudolph and Hermie instead. He found he found two hearts of gold instead. And in the end, isn't that isn't that the true the trick the true magic of Christmas? Yeah. Uh, then Rudolph's glowing nose let the abominable snow monster find them all. Thanks to Yukon's quick thinking, they escaped on an ice floe. The ice flow carried them to the Island of Misfit Toys, a place filled with odd toys. The ruler of the island, King Moonracer. <laughs> I actually never knew, never knew his name Moonracer. That's, that's pretty rad. Said, a toy is never truly happy until it's loved by a child. Rudolph promised the king that someday he would tell Santa about all these homeless toys. Maybe Santa could include them in his Christmas deliveries to children around the world. Rudolph asked King Moonracer if he and his friends could stay on the island of misfit toys. This island is not for living things, said the king. It is only for misfit toys. Well, how do you like that, said Yukon. Even misfits were misfits. The king let the friends rest overnight before they moved on. When Hermie and Yukon were asleep, Rudolph slipped away, knowing that his nose would put them in constant danger with the abominable snow monster. He didn't want to be the cause of any harm to his friends. The abominable snow monster did indeed find Rudolph because of his glowing nose. He chased the young reindeer everywhere. During that time, Rudolph grew up. One day, he realized it was time to go home. Meanwhile, Rudolph's parents and Clarice had been looking out for him ever since he left. Had been out looking for him ever since he left. It was now two days before Christmas Eve, and Santa told Rudolph that without Donner, he'd never be able to get his sleigh off the ground. Rudolph was determined to find his parents and Clarice. As he, as he began to look for them, the storm of all storms hit. Thick snowflakes fell, making it hard to see. 
Rudolph had an idea where his parents and Clarice were. In the cave of the abominable snow monster. It seems like a stretch. He made his way there despite the storm and found Clarice in the monster's clutches. Put down, Rudolph cried. The abominable snow monster did. And went after Rudolph instead. Yukon and Hermie, who had been searching for their friend, arrived at the cave just in time. Quickly, they lured the monster outside and knocked him out with a big rock. Then Hermie removed all of the monster's teeth. Finally, Hermie got to be a dentist. I, I know I, I never went to medical school, but I feel like there's got to be more to being a dentist than just removing teeth. Uh, I mean, I've had my share, fair share of, of teeth removed over the years. I, this is canon. Santa only has two teeth, one on the top, one at the bottom, and they're not, they're not lined up. They're in completely different spots. But it's fine. It's all, it's all those cookies and candy canes. And, you know, you're bound to lose a few teeth. And, I, and the two teeth I have are, are implants. I forgot to mention that. When the abominable, abominable snow monster woke up, Yukon pushed him back and back and back until the monster, Yukon, and his dogs all slipped over the edge of a cliff. Rudolph and his friends and family were heartbroken when they returned to Christmas Town. When the others heard the entire story, they realized that those who are different are important too. They apologized to Rudolph and Hermie. The foreman even told Hermie he could open up his own dentist office, which was a good thing. We were long overdue. Uh, the closest dentist was in Greenland. And, and you know, it just the fl the flights weren't, you know, you, what, are you going to fly there for one day just to get a root canal? I, I don't think so. It's nice to have it right there. We also got a bank after those people were like, well, we got to pay the dentist. Or we, get, we need a bank. And so we got that. We got a, we got a, a Carl's Jr. also. It's it pretty nice. There's a lot of good things came from this adventure. All right. They apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... And Santa agreed to find homes for the misfit toys. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was Yukon, his dogs, and the abominable snow monster. Even though they had all gone over the cliff, the abominable snow monster was able to bounce. And so they had all landed safely. Now the monster was no longer mean. He even got a job. He placed the star on the top of the Christmas tree. Everyone cheered. Hey, he he did get it. The he works at the Carl's Jr. I know we said he got a job putting the star on top of the Christmas. That's like the definition of seasonal. You have to do that like one time a year. Uh, so now he works. Uh, he works. He's a manager. He's a manager. He's he's doing great. The next day was Christmas Eve, but the weather was so bad that Santa could not fly his sleigh safely through it. Uh, that is true. Uh, I am only. Certified to fly VFR, visual flight rules. I'm not instrument rated, uh, so I do have to be able to see. Uh, this was, <sighs> you may have heard this story before. No spoilers, but, uh, you know, Rudolph is going to light this, light the way. And that's a technicality. Technically still in IFR conditions, I, I would not be allowed to fly. Uh, but, you know, Christmas presents had to be delivered. And, and we did stretch uh, stretch the rules a little bit there. Uh, let's see. Uh, he reluctantly started to tell everyone that Christmas was going to be canceled for the first time ever. But then he realized that there was a way through the storm after all. Rudolph, Santa said, you and that wonderful nose of yours, that nose can cut through the murkiest storm. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Rudolph replied, it would be an honor, sir. The sleigh was loaded, the reindeer got into place, and Santa climbed aboard. Rudolph took the lead, and the sleigh took off. Santa's first stop, the Island of Misfit Toys. Everyone had an extra Merry Christmas that year, and Rudolph went down in history as the greatest reindeer of all time. The end. All right. Let's see, let me, uh, 
Take a little bit of this cocoa here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You know, I think it's even better if you don't unwrap the candy cane, actually. Get a little bit of that, uh, that kind of plasticky taste in there. Let's see. Uh, what do we still have left? We got the Crayons Christmas. That one's kind of a complicated book to read. I think the Nutcracker might be a bit too long. Uh, we got Never Feed a Grumpy Reindeer. Let's blow through that real quick. Right, look at this. Let's get this one out of the way. All right. Never Feed a Grumpy Elf. This is actually, you're going to see, this is actually propaganda for uh, for the dentist's office that we opened up. They they released this to get people to, to you know, kind of trick people into needing more work done. Never feed a grumpy elf potatoes for his lunch. Give him lots of candy canes. He loves to hear them crunch. Yeah, you're definitely going to need some fillings chewing on candy canes. Oh, boy. Never feed a grumpy polar bear sushi made of rice. But cocoa worms are up when she goes fishing on the ice. Never feed a grumpy snowman pizza that you froze. Feed him nice fresh veggies and a carrot for his nose. Yeah, the snowman is allowed to eat healthy because snowmen don't have teeth. So that's that's what's going on there. Never feed grumpy Santa meals of cheese and bread, but he'll put you on the nice list if you give him cake instead. That is true. I will do that. I can be bought. Never feed a grumpy reindeer waffles with whipped cream. Give her Christmas cookies and she'll share them with her team. That is not true. I can't tell you how many times Blitzen has gotten cookies, cookies given to him by somebody wanting to say thank you for the work that the reindeer and myself do every year. And uh, come to find out all the white chocolate macadamias have been eaten. And that's not, that's, that's not great. Uh, let's see here. And this one, I think this one's a nice book. This is a, this is an elephant and piggy book. It's called Waiting is Not Easy. And it's a book about, uh, about, about waiting and how that's hard. Okay. Waiting is not easy. Gerald, I have a surprise for you. Yay, what is it? I need a different voice for the elephant. Uh, yay, what is it? <laughs> no, not that one. Uh, yay, what is it? All right, there we go. The surprise is a surprise. Oh, is it big? Yes. Is it pretty? Yes. Can we share it? Yes. I cannot wait. You'll have to. Wait, why? Why? The surprise is not here yet. So I will have to wait for it? Yep. Groan. Oh, if I have to wait, I will wait. I am waiting. Waiting is not easy. Piggy, I want to see your surprise now. I'm sorry, Gerald, but we must wait. Groan! I am done waiting. I do not think your surprise is worth all this waiting. I will not wait anymore. Okay, I will wait some more. It will be worth it. Groan! Piggy, we have waited too long. It's getting dark. It is getting darker. Soon we will not be able to see each other. Soon we will not be able to see anything. Wasted the whole day. Well, um... We have waited and waited and waited and waited. 
For what? For that. Now, before we turn the page, who knows what the surprise is? A Christmas candy cane for, for whoever can tell me what the surprise is. We got it. We got it. Here we go. Look at that. Look at those stars. That isn't. If that isn't so pretty. This was worth the wait. I know. Tomorrow morning, I want to show you the sunrise. I cannot wait. All right. That's the end of that book. And I think... I think we're reaching the end of our story time stream for the year. And I just want you all to know that this year... <laughs> this year has been hard. It's been hard on all of us. But it's almost over. Just got to get through another week or so. Let me just uh chug some cocoa. You know what? I'm going to give I'm going to give it, cocoa through the beard is kind of hard. If any of you have your kids, uh if any of you actually are watching with your kids this late, I'm going to give you a minute to get them out of the room. Let's get them out of there. Cuz we're going to we're going to take we're going to take 2020 out. By just taking all the disgusting crap that 2020 threw at us. We're just going to swallow it all up. And we're never going to have to deal with it again. But I don't want to ruin Christmas for your kid. So if you got your kid in the room, you got 10 seconds to get him out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. That's the pecans. I was trying to chug them up. I got hit with a pecan. Hold on. Okay, that's done. Twenty twenty is done. We got nothing left. Let's move on. Thanks for watching. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh.